Sirs, I, I am 60 years old. I, I spent all my life like a... No, no. Sirs, I, I am 60 years old. I spent all my life like a wolf in sheep. Take your Sirs, time. We have all the time in the world. Sorry, I, I know it. It's just... Okay, just give me one more chance. This is an iconic play! Quick, quick, before they all die. The hard ebony head of Arthur Jacobs, the bare pate. The broken teeth that make his grin more powerful. A man with no money, despite his tremendous presence. Light as a leaf and as delicate, dancing. Coal black and like coal packed with inspiring fire. A diamond with its memory fading. Jesus. The beauty he contains, a beauty of soul, no less than that, a wit, an intelligence. The degrading indifference he has had to endure, some of the best already gone. Wilbert Holder, Claude Reed, Ermin Wright. Against the wind for a long time, they kept a steady flame of devotion. They had to do what was right for their calling against their most polished detractors, like those who claim they cannot be black and actors. I mean mean minds who find a contradiction in their passion and sacrifice, but whom I cherish more than the most overpriced fiction. I must clear the house of my head. I must make room for a shrine before they all die with fireflies and starlight. Makak! Makak, wake up with me, Mustik! Makak! You didn't tell me calling you from the throat of the gully? Look, I bring a next bag from my Al Sindor Cafe. Today is a market day. And time and tide wait for no man. I, I tie Bertilia to a gourmet tree by the Wazin. Bertilia? Which Bertilia? Listen to him. Which Bertilia? The donkey you and I buy from Felicia. A rare blend of passion and humility. Arthur Jakes Jacobs is described as an artist in the truest sense of the word, a creative with a profound and centric talent honed to its sharpest peak. Make a white mist in your mind and make that mist hang like the, the cloth from the dress of a woman on prickles, on branches. Make it rise from the earth. As I brush through the bushes, shaking up the dew, a man walking through smoke, uh, a bandage of fog and peel my eyes as I reach this spot. I see this woman singing. My foot grow roots. I could move no more. I knew him on the stage when we acted in different plays. Um, see a Dauphin, I think it was, that's right, many years ago. Uh, Henri Christophe, mostly Derek Walcott's plays, I, I, I was part, but he was always a lead actor. That was his strength. He had a fantastic memory. And to be a good actor, you have to have a good memory so that you can explain it, express it in a very convincing form. Ah, good morning, youngster. It's a damp, mournful walk through the forest, isn't it? And only the cheap of a bird to warm one. Makes the old bones creak. 
Bonjour, Vico. My name is Tija. What I can never forget about Jake's on stage, there were two little children who were supposed to be the offspring of the princess. And the princess is murdered in the play, the play which is played, a part played by Zin, Zin Thibbles, who was another famous arts girl actress. And when Jake thundered out in one of his lines, the children started to cry. They were supposed to be dead. <laughs> they were frightened out of, from death. <laughs> he won an award, best, I think, best supporting actor for that way. And that was my first experience with Arthur Jacobs. Arthur Jacobs had a love affair with stone and wood. He was a self-taught craftsman and sculptor, using salmon and mahogany found naturally in St. Lucia, creating unique North American pieces. Some of his commissioned work can be found in government of St. Lucia offices, royal palaces, foreign diplomatic offices, and places of high esteem. As a sculptor, he created bronze busts for famous St. Lucians like Garnet Gordon, Louis McVeigh, and Dr. Carl Le Corbinier. He studied sculpting, right? He had gotten a, a scholarship, a fellowship to um, go to the United States. I think, I think this would have been way back in the, oh boy, maybe early 70s, I'm not even sure. No, earlier than that, no, I mean earlier than that, um, I think. I think I'm, I'm not sure, to, to study, um, so you did sculpture and thing. Um, but I mean, you couldn't really make a living as a sculptor here. And so, you know, you, you went into like, you know, making gravestones and plaques and that kind of thing. Um, and also the, the, the clocks, you know, the, you know, the shape of St. Lucia and that kind of thing. And, that, and that's, that's, what, that's what he put, his, um, that's what he put his, his skills, the use that he put his skills to. But I've wondered on more than one occasion what his sculpture would have been like. What, you know what it'd been like, and if he had, if he had really had the, the freedom to, to do it, you know what, what that would have been like. Um, really phenomenal man, you know. As often the case with creatives, Arthur Jacobs' talent bled into music and theater. He joined the Saint Lucia Arts Guild in 1959 at the age of 22, under the tutelage of Guild founders Roderick and Derek Walcott. Jake's blossomed as an actor. My eldest brother Hogarth, right, who would have been a few years younger than I am, than Arthur Jacobs, he's, he's 10 years older than I am, and younger than Arthur Jacobs, he was in the St. Lucia Arts Guild, right? Um, and from time when, when he was in that, that probably would be late 50s, probably early 60s, um, late 50s, early 60s. And um, he used to be coming home with the scripts of the plays that he was, that he was, uh, that he was um, performing in. I would be helping him to learn lines. And then I would go down to the, to the, um, to the town hall, to the Castries town hall, where Roddy Walcott would be directing. And I would sit at the back of the and I would watch the actors performing, well, you know, rehearsing. And Jake's would have been there among some of those early plays. I could remember that, you know? I've seen him perform, I've performed with him. I think once or twice I've directed him, at least I know I've directed him in workshops. I, I may have directed him. Very, very easy to direct. He doesn't have the airs of a prima donna or pretensions. You pay me no real respect. You tolerate me. I amuse you like some pretentious servant, a fellow dressed in his master's outfit in front of a mirror. Alors, General. Commander, you're more than that. I'm not a commander, General. My name is François Dominique Toussaint. I am a coachman. I was employed under the kind care of Monsieur Calix Brida. Jake's was he was a very quiet person, in a way, in the sense that he didn't speak much, but when he did, he exuded a very strong area of understanding and thought. He had strong expressions of how he felt, and he had a good voice, 
that made it very interesting and thoughtful. He was a consummate performer, one of Derek's favorite. And I just quickly put a list together of the plays that I have, uh, the only one I haven't seen him in is Haitian Earth, but he was in Macaque, the lead in Dream of Monkey Mountain. He was Papa Bois in Tijan and his brothers. Then he was uh, one of the three, the three in a rain is also called Sea of Dauphin. He was one of the actors there. And then we went all over Europe with the, the, the Odyssey. Derek did play the Odyssey and um, that's Odysseus, the Homeric tale of Odysseus. Uh, Jake's was Billy Blue, the narrator of all the uh, events and tales of Odysseus. So he was always on stage. Don't never see a man on a book then. Fair maybe reason. A bunch come down and put their own crap. This is good. <laughs> As a little girl, I remember being very excited when there were plays that were being staged for the first time. You know, I remember Chasson Marianne, Banjo Man, when they were first staged. Um, I remember at that, that time, um, the radio and the newspapers featured a lot in terms of promoting promoting um, the plays and anything that was happening with theater. So you'd hear um, excerpts from the plays being um, used in advertisements on the radio, you know, particularly um, after the news or around that time. And it was very exciting because I could, I could relate considering that I had for, for weeks heard my father practicing his lines, you know, and um, seeing the script, I would go through the script and read the script and I just found it so interesting. My father was not an actor who acted as if he was acting. My father is a natural actor. When he went on the stage, I mean, he had the mood, he had the, he channeled the character, you know, that he performed. So in my young years, that always fascinated me, how it is that you could do that. After the revolt of Bookman, such a series of savage, vicious scenes of hatred and revenge, such godless brutality, that I felt ashamed of my own race for what they could not inflict on the army, they took out on the citizens. And all the hatred and humiliation of a hundred years, you hear Moise, of a hundred years is being accounted for. They sawed an old planter in half between boards. They nailed a slave who tried to save his master. They nailed him to a door. They are killing women, children. The slave they nailed, I knew him. His name was Bartolo. Among his most memorable portrayals are that of Macaque in Sir Derek Walcott's Dream on Monkey Mountain, Harold Antipas in Salome, and Mephistopheles in the tragedy of Dr. Faustus. When the road 
roll is call up yonder when the roll is call up yonder when the roll is call up yonder when the roll is call up yonder i ain't going and nobody else are going you all too black except possibly corporal look it's a full moon you dreaming dreaming of women because you're so damn ugly you should walk on all fours sirs i just catch feet i, I just fall in a frenzy every full moon night i just be possessed after that i'm not responsible i'm responsible only to god who speak to me in the form of a woman on monkey mountain i is god's warrior you have been charged with certain things now let the prisoner make his deposition. Sirs, I am 60 years old. I live my whole life like a, a wild beast in hiding, without child, without wife. People forget me like, like the mist on Monkey Mountain. Of all his performances as part of the St. Lucia Arts Guild and through his career, it is unanimously agreed that his most iconic and acclaimed performance was as Toussaint L'Ouverture in Sir Derek Walcott's play, Haitian Earth, produced by the government of St. Lucia in 1984 to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the Haitian Revolution, the first successful rebellion by the enslaved people. Hit him all these years. I suppose they would call you a good nigger. You saw what I have had to do. All that out there. I myself thought that war would be so, so neat. You're watching my eyes to see if they will rain. I'll cry, but in the privacy of my own tent. You forced me to this decision. Well, all right, I obeyed the rules in peace as I obeyed them in war to destroy the enemy and destroy the past. But through the cannon smoke, the rain marching over the mulch of corpses, I had one target. I kept Pompey as the pivot of the war the axle of the revolution. Oh, you commanders, our cause could have come home, but the peasants tremble at us more than they did with the Frenchmen, like canes in expectation of a cutlass. I had just come out of St. Joseph's convent and I was very familiar with the history and I was very enamored of the significance of the role of Toussaint Louverture in terms of that whole consciousness and, you know, um, the consciousness that Haitians have even today, that they stand out in the world as that, that society in this hemisphere that really pushed back against, you know, um, slavery. So I was fully aware of who Toussaint Louverture was and, and it, it was very, um, it was very sobering for me. It was very exciting and thrilling for me that my father was selected to play that lead role of Toussaint Louverture. And, you know, that he was not, that he was in his, what, 40s, 50s in those days? Perhaps 50s. So I imagine Toussaint may have been slightly younger. And I was kind of impressed that, that he looked good in those days. You know, he's, he was slim, he was trim. You know, so that he could have taken on the role of a younger man, and he could have, um, he could have delivered it so commandingly. So, yeah, definitely the Haitian earth. But in terms of Daddy's maturity as an actor, I, I think that 
performance was just up and above, you know? It was in a class by itself. When all this is finished, treat him as your equal. No, even as your sovereign emperor. Serve him well, waiter, or else I will curse the Haitian earth from my grave that every furrow be dust and every womb in the soil barren. Jakes was a phenomenal actor. He really was. I mean, I've, 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 heard, I've heard Derek say so that um, I remember when, when they were doing um, excerpts from Haitian Earth one time, yeah, that he's, he's a world-class actor, and he really is. He really, really is, and, and very, very dedicated to it. Pe people have stories about Jake's um, on, the, on, on the beach, closer to, um, to the cemetery side, in the mornings with a mirror, trying out lines and trying expressions and that kind of thing, early, early morning. And I would, I would watch him sometimes like in, in rehearsals. Um, so like rehearsal I'd be going on the stage, his, his time hasn't come yet. And he'd be there, he'd try out a line, three, four, five different ways, different intonations, different speeds. He'd just be, you know, just, just trying things and listening to himself, you know. He really, he really had a, a, he really had a, a respect for the, for the craft that, that he was in. Idiot! These creatures are mine! A big man like you? Who you is? I am Papa Bois. You know why they call me that? Father of the forest? I don't care. No, you must care. Care for the brown frog that hops in your path. For the blackbird drinking from a pool in the road, Grosjean. Push off your papa. What you have with your foot? <laughs> please, please. They acted with him in the Haitian earth as he, I played Christophe, um, and he was Toussaint. Yeah, wear it. You're supposed to be my emperor, even at six in the morning. This medal here, Toussaint gave it to you at Denry. We stopped fighting to watch you crouched at the couch of black scream for your banner. You were then the sword and reason of this war. One by one, you cut us legions of dragoons like sugar and wheeled around again like a tiger spinning on its heel till all the lances of the French legion were piled level as canes and there was nothing standing between your fury and the setting sun. And so it went from top to army Across the ridges, the soldiers saw you half welded to your horse like a black center and whispered, this. Look, it was just an iconic situation because you had icons of icons in that. Just to give you an idea, you had Gandalf sent to play in Desalais. Excellent Desalais, diminutive, and he used his body weight to build the stature of Desalais, who was larger than life, including crying on the stage without makeup. Um, you, you had um, Eric Branford, who very good, uh, very good actor. Irvin Norville, who just passed away. You know, of course, Arthur Jacobs. And there, there, were, there were some Peace Corps, Peace Corps guys. There was a guy who played Anton. I don't remember his name right now. Very good actor. Yours truly played um, Christoph, And to be directed by Derek Walcott and his own play at that. So you can imagine what was happening. In fact, there was electricity on the stage in every sequence, you know? So much so that the director used to fly off the handle at times because these actors went into dimensions he never even saw in the script, you know? And Walcott always loved to be in control. And sometimes I felt that he was feeling he lost control, so he snapped at his actors. And there were disagreements, all of us. All of us had disagreements with him, but the next day we finish it up. It's just pure, like, professional. Well, Arthur was the kind of actor that he commanded the stage, and he had an incredible presence and charisma on stage, and he had a wonderful voice, a very deep a baritone and clear. His English was perfect, and, of course, Derek gave him the words to speak, so he was fantastic. 
He, he really was. And that was a hard role to play, of course, because it was about an old, beaten up old man who lived by himself and isolated too from women. He only had one friend, Mustique, <clears throat> and they would sell charcoal every week at the market. And that was, that setting is, by the way, in St. Lucia. I think one of the things from my father that we learned very early, it was that if you're going to do something, you had better do it well. If you, if your heart is not in it, or in other words, you are the best person to be the best of yourself. You know, you are an original, so you have whatever it is you put your mind to. If it is worth doing at all, you have to give it respect. And so that is one of the things that has stayed with me um, in terms of the ethic, your work ethic. You know, my father worked at his lines and he would rehearse and rehearse. They are hoisting the sail. The longboat is ready. You must go. I know, General. The earth is cracked. There is division among the soldiers. There must be peace. Call yourself a hostage to peace, General. And you promise the first consul to cooperate that when you are in exile, you will not try to make use of your authority. My authority? When this voice had authority, it lived in expectation of an echo. By the sea, armies, breakers throwing their caps in the air, lances of men bowed to it like the canes. But now it is an old man's cough, rattling gravel in a riverbed. My tongue is a dry leaf. The sun has set in my throat. My authority is hoarse. A child wouldn't obey it. No, sir. You needn't worry about my authority. Any more than ways. In another context, in another country, another thing, he'd have been like, he'd, he'd, have, he'd, he'd have been up there, you know, mm. we'd have, the world would have been hearing of him, really. I think that Jakes's recognition is much belated. In fact, apart from people like Derek Walcott and those of us who knew him, very few St. Lucians recognize the magnitude of that star. And Jakes, in my view, is perhaps the finest actor I have ever had the privilege to work with.